Good evening, everybody. Happy Monday, January 22nd. This is the uh, stunt hanger video hangout where we talk about aero modeling. And I'm rusty, still rusty. And uh, so, actually, I'm almost on time tonight. So, um, we're here to talk about aero modeling. And as usual, I've posted a link uh, to where you can get in this video on your live feed up in the uh, first post in the chat box, which is to the right of the video on stunt hanger. If you're watching there, um, otherwise, uh, if you've got a YouTube channel, you got the notification, uh, as soon as I opened the stream. And if you click on that notification, you should be able to get in here too. And when you first join, um, I won't be able to, uh, I'll be the only one that'll be able to see you. So I'll have to check um, and uh, confirm who you are and I'll turn your camera on and then I'll tell you to turn your mic on and we should be off and running. Um, fair warning, the other night we had a couple of instances where I couldn't turn people's cameras on and um, you had to log out and back in and then it seemed to work fine after that. So um, if we can, you know, if we have to do that, then um, that should that should take care of any problems. And uh, so I'll sit here and talk. Oh, we got one viewer already. I see on the YouTube side. Feel free to post in the chat box and uh, we can talk until we get a uh, video visitor and they usually trickle in. And I'm about 10 minutes early tonight, so it might take a few minutes um, for the video crowd to trickle in. They're used to me coming on about 9.40 Eastern time instead of 9.30. And uh, so uh, anyway, I'll sit here and wait until uh, somebody has something to talk about. And um, we'll continue talking about, like I said, aero modeling or um, power boat modeling or sailboat modeling or full size aircraft, just about anything. It doesn't even have to be airplanes or or vehicles it just has to be something interesting that you do with tools preferably and uh so i finally speaking of tools got all of my junk out back to the shop i've had my cardinal uh kid on the dining room table thinking i was going to be able to work on it over the holidays while i was uh, uh under the weather but i never did get a whole lot done i got to the point where i needed to draw uh, uh, some datum lines down the fuselage and it was just too clumsy on the table and also I was at the point where I needed to start slinging glue and I didn't want to do that on my antique dining room table either so yesterday after three trips out to the shop I got the cardinal out on the table got all the tools put back in their place and um, I actually uh, worked on it for a couple of hours and uh, um, woke up this morning thoroughly exhausted so that's a good sign I guess if I'm if I'm moving around good enough to be exhausted then I must be and I must be on the mend and I'm looking forward to oh we got somebody joining us let me enable your camera and then you'll be able to talk to us show in broadcast and who have we got oh hey Charles you can turn your mic on now all righty good evening Good evening. How about that? I'm early by about 10 minutes tonight. Yes, very good. <laughs> yeah. Let me turn my sound. Kind of, now, there we go. Oh, let me ask you this while I'm thinking about it. Can you hear me talking before I enable your camera and oh, yeah. before you, you can? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. I was just wondering if people were just looking at me and not knowing what was going on. So um, last time we had a little bit of trouble getting people in and a couple had to log out and log back in. So I hope that doesn't happen tonight. I got right. one of my uh, buddies from uh, Budapest, Hungary coming to visit us. I hope he's able to come in tonight. It's 3.30 a.m. his time. So he's wow. going to, I suggested he take him. <coughs> Excuse me. I suggested he uh, take a power nap and fix a pot of coffee and, Hopefully he could hang with us for a while, but, uh, but, uh, he's, he's a pretty good guy. Um, and, uh, so picking up a new viewer, that's always nice. 
Oh yeah. So how'd you come across him? Out of the what? How did you come across him? Oh, he's one of my buddies on CoxEngineForum.com. Oh, okay. All right. He travels the world. I think he's an engineering consultant for power companies, or he can straighten me out on that if he if he comes in tonight. But oh. um, his his working language is English, um, and so he uh, should be able to uh, talk to us with no problem. And um, I told him a lot of our international um, visitors don't speak English as their first language, but once we get used to listening to them and their uh, uh, expressions and and uh, they get to listen to us for a while, we get each other figured out. So it's not a big problem. We manage to communicate. And others right. just like to, others just like to watch. Um, yeah. Speaking of. Um, such guests Jorge hadn't been on lately from uh, he was from Colombia, South America, right? And we hadn't seen him since about November. I hope he'll look in on us and see that we're alive and well and drop back in. I hope so too. I hope so too. Hope to get Daryl back of, in here too and Wally and yeah, we got a couple of contributions to the uh, super chat the other night which is the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box. And um, so that was encouraging and uh, appreciate that. I don't know if they want me to mention their names or not. So I won't mention it now, but uh, you know who you are. We appreciate it. So did you go flying again today? Yeah, Charles? I did. I did. This is a, uh, I'm going to try to fly every morning this week if I can. Because a contest this weekend, and um, so I actually last night I actually trimmed off an eighth of an inch off my flaps, so I was kind of anxious to see what it'd be like, and and, uh, and I noticed a difference. It turned quicker, a little better. Yeah, and uh, it's just amazing um, doing something as small as an eighth of an inch. You does know, it yeah. turn? Does it turn with more or less authority, or is it just quicker to? react when you pull an input into the handle i don't know if that's a reasonable question or not do you know what i'm getting at um i don't know how to describe it um will it, will it turn sharper or you know, just quicker it seems it seems to be uh sharper because the circles seem to be a little bit smaller you know the round was yeah, smaller so. and the plane was a little bit more responsive but but not being uh, sensitive. You find so it's me? not stalling as much. It must have been stalling before when you would pull up on the flaps or down on the flaps. And I don't know what it was doing. That. I like it better now. <laughs> well, good. Good. I'm yeah, glad so you got the guts to experiment with your planes like that because I would have probably just flown it and gotten used to it and, and, and fought the problem as you... Uh, have pointed out that uh, that's not always the best approach to fly in a nice pattern. I'm telling you, it, it seems like, you know, when a plane flies better, it actually flies easier at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it's win win, you know, it's, and then, you know, with that eighth of an inch piece that I cut off, I still have it. So if I didn't like it, I could just glue it back there and wick in some yeah. CA, you know, so it'd really be, yeah. You know, I mean, the one that's, that's really going. That's a, that's a uh, span wise strip that you cut off, not a cord that's wise right. strip. Yeah. That's right. Span wise. Yeah. And so, uh, I don't know. I just love it. You know, Bob Wiley uh, suggested I do that. And, um, and I'm just so excited about it. I can't wait to uh, compete. I'm not going to be on too long time. I actually, I need to bend some more landing gear. Landing gear I have right now uh, is okay for grass, but it's, Definitely not good for a hard surface. Are you using wire landing gear? Wire. Yeah. Yes, yeah, just uh, the angle and also the way I bent it because when it comes out of the wing, I have a, a space that's over an inch that goes straight down and then it bends forward. And I think that that space of one inch that's straight down before it bends again is yeah. causing it to spring and bounce. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that might cause a little 
uh, extra leverage in there where it's secured inside the wing too. So that might be a weak point. I don't know. Just yeah. guess. I, I think it makes it bounce. So I'm going to bend some new wire. And unfortunately, I'm not set up where I can work and be on the call at the same time. So I thought oh, I I'm okay. off. I've been I considering off. turning off early tonight anyway, because I'm, I'm just worn out from, um, uh, yesterday and don't know if I ever fully recovered from Thursday, both of which were extremely busy, productive days for me, but uh, man, I'm tired. Um, okay. I don't have the stamina built back up, but uh, I don't want to drain my resources, but uh, man, I could tell I'd been hard at work yesterday because I got all that stuff for the Cardinal and the tools and parts and everything three wagon loads back out to the shop and on the table and put away and then then put two or three hours of work into the thing so by the time i was through <laughs> i was walking pretty slow what did you do i mean I'd be, I'm, what work did you do on the plane i mean well it uh doesn't sound like much but i got to the point when it was on the table in the house that i needed to draw the datum lines on it and this thing nothing's aligned the wing and the stab and the engines uh, uh, parallel lines aren't all on the same plane. So I had to draw, well, I drew two datum lines. One's the thrust line and one is the uh, incidence line. And um, uh, and I'm, I'm really meticulous about getting that exactly right. Uh, oh, wait, let me let Jim Ballard in. Hang on, Jim, while I enable your, uh, enable your camera. And going broadcast and now you can turn your microphone on and see if we got you, How about you hear that? It? all right we're all together all right. so far. good evening jim good evening rusty charles hey jim how are you fine sir how are you doing well sir we're just getting it kicked off i was telling charles i got all of my cardinal project back out to the shop where it belongs and was working on getting the datum lines drawn and um on the outboard side anyway and um that way i can get the engine holes aligned so i don't have it with up thrust or down thrust and, and i want to make sure the nose rings in the right place so i got to add the out thrust on it too so um i was afraid to do all that in the house because it was so clumsy working on a table that's not as wide as the fuselage um right. and, uh, so anyway now i can do some serious work on it but I, I got pretty worn out doing all that hauling hauling stuff back and forth to the shop but uh, I but i'm glad i can do it now so you know i just need to take it easy and not wear myself out and um, i'm i'm happy to uh, be back at work good hey my good wife deal. called me i'm gonna sign off now you have jim at least okay and maybe i'll catch you later okay take it easy charles take care, charles evening. All right, man. See ya. You bet. Charles has got to go bend some landing gear and um, things like that. And apparently his wife needs his services now. So uh, we got five viewers watching us over on the YouTube side. Nobody's posted yet, but uh, but um, hopefully some more guys will drop in. And I had um, who was it? It was. Um, I forget. It was Ron. Was it Ron Hess? No. One of our guys the other night couldn't get, oh, it was Steve Muncy couldn't get his microphone to work. And we've had a couple of people with that problem. You had a microphone problem at one time too, didn't you? I did. Uh, and I, I think it was. Compatibility? Uh, I think it was the other site. Mm. Uh, we had a compatibility problem with my webcam. Yeah. And Windows 10. Yeah. But I'm still using that same webcam now. Oh, okay. And well, I think maybe it was Ron Hass that I was thinking of, and uh, he had upgraded his operating system or gotten a new computer, and, and it wasn't compatible with Windows 10. He had a Logitech C250 mic and cam combination, and I've got the 270 on my Windows 10, and it works fine. And so he went and bought one of those, and it worked okay after that. So um, maybe, maybe that's... Uh, Maybe that's Steve's problem. I hope so. I, I, I uh, PM'd him and told him what I thought about it. So maybe he'll try to get in again tonight. 
Well, I hope so. Yeah, disappointed when people try to get in and can't. But uh, yeah, I, I had trouble uh, enabling people's cameras the other night, and um, I hadn't had that problem tonight. So, so far, so good. Good deal. So, well, what I you went to doing a, today? I'm gonna say I went to a swap meet over the weekend uh, down near Austin with my son. Oh, you get any good stuff? Yeah, uh, I scored a brand new in the box smoothie ARF. No shit, that's Throw a good flying old plane. It's an it's old uh, old time stunt uh, legal too. Uh -huh. Beautiful My buddy airplane. Wayne, uh, took a, a a film canister and made a made a, a faux piston with a glow plug in the top of a faux cylinder with a glow plug in the top of it, and. Um, <laughs> It looks pretty cool. I, I don't know if he took it out or not. I think people were teasing him about it, but but <laughs> it looked. I thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah, sounds like it. Because it's got the engine pointed straight up in the front, mm -hmm. which makes it a lot easier to deal with. I never have uh, gotten a hundred percent happy with cranking and running inverted engines. They get they fill up with gas too easy. One thing uh, my friend from Philly Flyers, Ken Cook, told me to do is if you've got a cylinder full of fuel and it's hype and it's hydro locking to uh, invert it so that the Venturi is pointing. Wait a minute. Pointing up. Yeah. So that all the fuel flows down into the crankcase when you rock the prop back and forth, but don't pull it through compression just to compression and back and forth to compression and it'll push all that fuel out of the out of the cylinder from the top of the piston down into the crankcase where you then you can flip it back over with the venturi pointed down and ease the prop around until the port is open and it pour out that fuel and then it's it's primed and good to go it'll usually crank right up after you do that with no more priming so that's yep. that's a good trick for inverted engines do some guys turn the airplane over and start them right side up if they're inverted? Inverted yeah. the yeah. A lot of people do that, but that's I'd prefer to be able to uh, not have to do that much fumbling around, rocking the plane right. back and forth when I've got right. a. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people have dedicated pit man. A lot of people don't, and when you've got somebody that's never pitted with you before, it's enough. Um, to just get them used to figuring out how you want things done without having to add something like that to the, to the mix. Mm -hmm. Right. So have you flown anything lately? Not, not lately. It's, it's been, you know, you guys are probably going, Oh yeah, sure. It's cold down here, but <laughs> it's been cold. <laughs> I, cold believe and wind. I believe you. Oh, it's, it's, it's we're all acclimated to our own environment and so cold is relative to you know how long you've lived there yeah one day last week we woke up to eight degrees ouch yeah we, we rarely get down there we don't either but this winter we have this winter has been cold tell me where are you again uh you're in I'm halfway between uh let me let me see uh abilene mm -hmm. abilene texas i'm about 50 miles west of yeah. abilene a uh, little bitty town of 300 called blackwell texas <laughs> yeah. yeah we got seven viewers on youtube now hello people out on youtube thanks for watching us I Feel free to post something in the uh, chat box. It's over to the right of the video if you want to, or it'll pop out. You can you can pop it out and uh, move it around the screen so you can have um, the video on one side, the chat box on the other, and you if you want to. Um, but uh, I got on actually early tonight, so people might be a little later coming in than they usually are. It's supposed yeah. to start at 9.30, and I always started at 9.40, but I was Johnny on the spot tonight for some reason. <laughs> and uh, 
so they might be expecting me to come on later. I got a friend uh, from my other. Oh, hey, Ron. Ron Hass is here. Ron, was it you that uh, had the compatibility problem with your microphone and your new operating system? We're trying to get uh, Steve Muncy straightened out. He didn't have any sound the other night. see if he answers us on that one. Now I lost my train of thought now, but uh, I think uh, that happens. Yeah, it does. Uh, it happens yeah, to me all the time. It, it confirms <laughs> it was, it was him that had the compatibility problem. So you might be able to go back and run those older cameras in leg. I think they call it legacy mode or compatibility mode and get them to work, but it'd be better to get the new one that's built for the op operating system that you have. Oh, you still hadn't got, obviously still hadn't got it to work. Okay. So, and that was a C250, if I recall that you had, and I'm using the C270 on Windows 10. I have the C250 I'm running right now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Well, Tom Creasy called me earlier. He texted me. I didn't realize he texted me for about an hour, but uh, he wanted to uh, come on tonight and make sure we were going to be here. So I assured him we'd be here. So hopefully he'll pop in pretty soon. And about every other time we're on here, somebody asks about your crossbow back there. Oh, Eddie Suter's on. You run through Google Hangout for the video chat. Um, Eddie, if you are on a cell phone, um, I believe that's the best way to do it. If you're on a computer, you've got to have the Google Hangout installed as a app in your Chrome browser. If you don't have the Chrome browser, then you may very well need to download that uh, Google Hangouts app. And <clears throat> to get the apps, there's a on, on the Google search page. There's a a, a a matrix of about nine little square boxes and a square. And if you click that, it's a list of uh, it's a list of apps you can get. And you might have to scroll down. And you can drag them around and put them where you want them. But Google Hangouts is down near the bottom usually. And so if you install that, um, there may be some other things to make it um, uh, work with your microphone and camera that you need to click. Um, but but see if that is any help. <coughs> Excuse me. I seem to have developed a cough tonight. Hopefully it'll clear out. And Eddie says he used that when he was playing on line darts. <clears throat> I don't know what line darts is. A lot of people use this for gaming, I think. <clears throat> and a lot of people use that other site. The one whose name I want mentioned here because uh, the GoogTube doesn't like it when I talk about it. But uh, the other site we were using um, is used a lot for gaming, too. <laughs> uh, we need some stimulation around here. Yeah. My <laughs> darts. I got it. It's a it's a it's a dart game. Okay. <laughs> what he was talking about. Um yeah, and if you uh if you click the link that I posted in the in tonight's stunt hanger thread, and you can get to that link at the top thread in your chat box there, um, then um, that should take you to our window right here, and then you can jump through a couple of hoops and join us. You gotta click I understand and I have read and that kind of thing, but that should bring you right in. Assuming you've got your mic and camera enabled. 
Did Just you talk about on the first one? Online darts with other people. That's uh, Mike Leinke's friend, uh, Eddie, came in um, for the first time that I remember the other night and uh, he hung out on the chat side pretty well. I like it when we get a lot of chat, uh, YouTube folks chatting with us. I like it uh, when we can get them in video, too. And let's see. Oh, he still has to remount his camera. <coughs> That's the way I got on the first time was on my iPhone. Yeah. Oh, an iPhone, not an Android. It was an iPhone, yeah. Was it? Okay. I heard different things about iPhones, but I, I hear you have to use the Google Hangouts app with an iPhone. And I'm not so sure if you've got an Android with Chrome, whether you have to have that installed or not, or maybe it comes pre-installed. It might. It can it gets kind of confusing um, when my buddy from Cox Engine Forum was asking me how to get in. I started writing him the instructions and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and it got complicated looking and I'm thinking, damn, no wonder people have trouble getting in. <laughs> well, if I can do it, I assure anyone out there that they can do it because <laughs> I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer when it comes to that kind of stuff. No, maybe, maybe not. There's some, uh, uh, there's some pretty, uh, um, there, there's some pretty slow computer dudes out there, but, um, whatever. I mean, I was, I was, uh, thrust into it back in the 1980s because I was in the office machines business. And that was back when we were in <coughs> DOS 5.0. And so I kind of grew with it as it went and kept up as it went along because you have to do it every day to really know what to do when the system goes afoul. Yeah. Can you hear my dog chewing on that bone? Is that what it is? Yeah, I heard something crunching and bumping in the background. <laughs> <clears throat> I, had a, I had a blind lab and she was about a 90 pounder at her optimum weight. She got over a hundred at times in her life, but uh, we'd give her those uh, uh, rawhide bones for Christmas and, and um, she'd eat the whole thing in about a half hour. It would just be gone. I, I yeah. think, I think they're intended to last for weeks and weeks, but she just haul off and eat it. <laughs> oh, there she is. Is it a she or a he? It's a she. What's her name? Tabby. Tabby. Hey, Tabby. Can you see me, baby? Yeah, she looked at the mic. Hey, Tabby. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. I don't have me a dog anymore. All I got is a couple of cats. I wonder where everybody is tonight. Come on, folks. Join the crowd. Well, I get a little bit more done on my twister. Oh, good. Yeah, you're going to. Now, if you've, if you've, flown, you've flown a twister before, or is this your first one? No, I've never flown a twister before. You'll like it. This is That twister is a nice plane. Yeah, I, uh, you know, they're an adjustable rudder. Uh huh. Oh, really? And, uh, uh, the tank has a height adjustment on it, too. So, yeah, that's a must. You got to have that. And as it, a, uh, uh, it's not so, it's not so critical about that if you've got a clunk tank, but if you've got just a, a, a metal uniflow tank, then you, then you need the, uh, um, adjustment on it for sure. Right. It's got adjustable lead outs and a weight box in it too. So yeah, that's another must have adjustable lead outs and adjustable weight box and all that stuff. And that's about it. I, if you want to pancherize it, you know, and elongate the uh, fuselage and, 
and and also uh, add more squares to the stab stabilizer elevator, then you can do that. But I'm told that the twisters fly just fine if you don't. Um, and and I didn't I didn't venturize mine other than I molded the sh uh, changed a little bit of the shape of the canopy and cut the rudder down just a little oh, bit. Oh, me too. Yeah, I hate that canopy. This uh, on the Sig kits that little bump in the middle of the fuselage I, I, mine's uh fared in kind of with the turtle deck that goes all the way uh uh in an increasing slope from the um vertical stab all the way up and begins the curve into the canopy and then comes back down and i think that looks sleeker it looks really like that and you're you're going to put triplers on the uh, nose of yours too, aren't you? Yeah, I did. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're not as wide as yours. Uh, Most people. Aren't. I think that's a Walter Rumlin thing, or maybe not Walter, but uh, the two guys that um, whose names are on the plans. One is Ted Fancher, of course, and the other one I cannot remember. Um who's who the other name is on the bottom of those plans but uh yeah they came out with a pretty slick looking um airframe i think it's really attractive mm -hmm. yeah um uh, i don't think it does a damn thing for the way it flies but i like for a plane to look attractive oh you bet i, I pride myself I, and and i'm as sure you do also uh you know and I don't want to come out to the field with the points look nice, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a, I'm I'm really anal about making them look nice when I'm building them, but um, after I start getting scars and repairs, I wear them like badges too, badges of oh, honor too. So sure, I don't sure. I don't worry too much about that. I wanted to ask you a question about yours uh, in that video you were showing how to align. Uh, the tail and you had these sticks with all holes in them. Yep. <clears throat> and I noticed when you were gluing the wing in that you had already primed and prepared the fuselage. Oh, it had primer on it. Yeah. Right. And so that's what I did with mine. I started. Yeah. Uh, getting the primer and then I'm, I'm I think I'm going to wait until <clears throat> the wings will be covered. And and then I'm going to tape off the wings. Uh, yeah, mask it also the had silk span on it too. Oh, it did. Okay. Yeah, no, I didn't it was underneath the. Yeah, that was underneath the primer, and it had um, it had it had a, a a laminated two piece fuselage, two quarter inch pieces with carbon veil in the center, and it had um, half ounce fiberglass covering the whole exterior of the fuselage and then it had silk span and then it had DC 540 and then it had okay. paint. Okay. Okay. I bet yours is going to be a lot prettier than mine or is a lot prettier. Yeah, probably than mine. heavier too. Um, I think mine weighs, um, I forgot what it weighs now. It's under 50, but not much. I can't remember exactly. It was what also a little tail right? heavy. So I had to put a, uh, a, a heavy spinner on the front and uh, a little heavier muffler and I think I'm finally playing with different spinners and mufflers gotten back down to a a, a lighter muffler but I've got a, a aluminum muffler with that Dave Brown adapter nut where you screw the uh, spinner on from the front and that adds a, a little bit of weight and um, and it balances right about at the spar and it's still um forward of where the balance point on the kit uh um the plans say okay <clears throat> or what what engine what is engine still, are you it, is it still aft i can't remember yeah it's still aft of where the kit plans say i've got a fp40 on it okay okay it's, uh, one that's been uh worked over for a stunt run and i don't know how long it'll last because those uh, ABN OS engines tend to peel the nickel off the inside if you run them for a while after you've been 
scraping and 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 re reshaping on the ports and somebody else did it and gave me the motor and said don't look inside of it just run it and it runs remarkably well so i'm just gonna fly it until it quits flying good okay well and, I, I came back with the with the tower 40 also from that swap meet you can ron Hess says are you making an rf out of it who are, who are you asking ron are you asking jim you got a what a, an fp40 at the mate no, i've got a tower 40. i they believe that's, that's an os it. some people say that's a better engine than the fp40 well i i got this one at the swap meet guy walked up and just gave it to me with a muffler and it's uh it's really smooth got lots of compression and is that an abc motor i as i assume so I, i'm pretty looks, sure it is but i couldn't you swear in, to it when you look in the exhaust port in the light it looks like an abc motor but yeah I, the only I, way to know for sure is to uh uh i guess you could take the head off and see if a magnet sticks to the and see if a magnet sticks to the um, liner in right. the piston. Yeah. Oh, Terry's here. Hey, boy, no time long. Uh, something like that. How are you? Oh, yeah, I got to hang on. Let me enable your uh, camera one moment. Show and broadcast. Oh, come on. Let Terry in. Sometimes we have to hack. Okay, now. There he is. Now you're in. Looks like okay. you're Mike. How are 10 you tonight? Four. Good, good. Ten four, Eleanor. Yeah, man. And I'm glad to hear that. You know, I was on a little earlier, but I was in uh, with my wife. But I was glad to hear you were uh, got everything moved back out to the shop and yeah, getting that cranked up. <clears throat> yeah, and, me um, too. I yeah. wore my sorry ass out doing it, but um, listen, I love twisters, man. I, I, I don't know how many I built because I built a bunch for my kids. I mean, there was a while there, uh, we're going back 20 years, where American Hobby Center was basically giving you a twister kit and a um, Fox 35 stunt for $24.95. <laughs> wow. wow. Both. That's a, Both that's a of them. I was buying them just to get the motors. <clears throat> but listen i i would strongly suggest you stretch it three inches and just cut it in half and you can laminate it back together with this here let me turn my camera around right, well keep in mind this. he's also a retread yeah. here and so you know just getting his legs under him is going to be the main thing yeah well i think it's easier to fly really with a longer moment it probably is. It's a little uh, gentler on the turns, I, su I suppose. Yeah, rather than you know, I compare. I've flown them, you know, both ways, and I I just really believe it's a better plane with that three inch stretch. I here, agree. Here, here's mine laying on the uh, on the tugboat, and it's th this one spliced in because uh, the. Um, Oh, the last couple that I had been flying now, now that I've been doing this, um, this type of lamination, like on the, uh, this is the, um, that's the Cardinal. Okay. So I yeah. took that lamination back and then I sanded it just where it went away because it's got that cool profile to it. You know, that eggy, um, elliptical profile to the whole thing. Yeah. Really adds a ton of strength with very little weight. And yeah, you know, I agree with you about the extension on the fuselage because if compare it with a short coupled plane like a flight streak or a smoothie. Oh, with, yeah, exactly. You know, and they're so squirrely that um, you got to really work you, at you it. You will have better success by stretching that fuselage and just use whatever scrap wood you've got to go between the two fuselage quarter inch sides and then go ahead and laminate like that herringbone thing use your 
your thrust line or whatever, just draw parallel lines on each side of the few. I mean, a line down the center line. And I use scrap wood. I use um, all the nested wood from a lot of the old die crunch kits. I, I never throw that stuff away. I take my balsa stripper and I strip it all the strips. And then I give it, you know, like I've gotten rid of most of my stuff with these uh, teaching these young guys how to build planes. Yeah. You know, I give them a pile of scrap wood and I give them an Eiffel Tower that I, as I'm talking to them, I build this little Eiffel Tower. And uh, then um, you, you give them their little tube of uh, thick medium CA, the purple, and uh, let them go. Tremendous <laughs> fun. Hopefully they don't. Uh, we we had one the other day, and I told these guys, I said, hey, you guys better bring um, some aprons. And they all laughed. You know, what a faggy thing. <laughs> so they got all their little uh, Cub Scout uniforms on. I warned them. Super glue city. Yeah. <laughs> With Mom sanding and dust Mom on and top of them. <laughs> Mom and Dad paid a bunch for those pretty little blue uniforms. Uh, oh, I know it, man. I've been there. I've been there like 20 oh, years too. ago I was there. I remember yeah. I was in the third grade when I wore my Cub Scout uniform to school. Oh, and they're, you're so proud of it. Yeah, and my teacher said, wow, Rusty, you really look good in that uniform. I was like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was somebody now. <laughs> yep, that's the trick. Anyway, it's uh, – it's good. So I got a good group of guys flying some um, two-channel gliders down here, two- and three-channel gliders. But the um, my big problem is they all want to jump into um, trying some control line, but, man, there's no motors. And, um, you know, um, well, I'll just tell you like it is. I mean, and you can check it out. But the democratic elite have invested so heavy in China and bet against America. That's why all the businesses left from Dubro to uh, Black and Decker, old Milwaukee tools, all of them went to China. Yeah, I know. And you can buy hey, all the copies. The guy, Listen, have you ever you watched can... a guy on YouTube that uh, evaluates? Oh, sure. Tools and... Uh, uh, AVE Balter is what he calls right. it. Yeah. So now they're coming back. And um, Steve, the other night I was watching um, with, you know, because I had to, I was babysitting my wife. At any rate, uh, he mentioned how he was in this factory and this huge factory only had four people in it. Well, all these power tool factories are coming back and there's a big plant going up outside of Waukegan that's north of Chicago I have a friend that's an overhead lighting contractor and he's in there working on this place they're taking out all the old fluorescents and they're putting in LED lights boy that'll be a huge and it, cost saver and it's all robotic this place used to hire about 2200 people the place is going to run on less than 40 people there you go. Yeah. Robotics. But the this one guy, there was one Chinese um, high pressure molding outfit that was doing all the engine casings. I mean, all of them. All of them. From magnums to towers to um, evolutions to... Um, Oh, I don't know. Whatever. And all this technology came from K&B. Because K&B got bought out and squeezed out. And that technology went to China. And that's when you saw all those engines come out. Certainly you you saw that, right? Or not? I don't know if I was in it before that started oh, yeah. happening. Because, you know, I've only got about... Oh, yeah. Uh, Five years. Well, well, this well anyway, after, after. you know, now, you know, there's a lot of businesses have been very much attacked by the IRS. I mean, the IRS had been weaponized by the Obama administration. And I'm going to tell you something Tower Hobbies 
and um, uh, the other one, Hobby Lobby or whatever, Horizon Hobbies. Yeah. They're under attack, man. They are under attack. And it'll be just by the skin of the hair of their family jewels that they stay open. It's a it's a friggin' crime. It is a crime. Uh, and my wife says, Terry, you're going to get on there and you're going to tell them that. I said, well, Norma, this is the way it is. And they need to know, because if there's anything we can do, just you need to. And I'm sorry, Gerald, if you're listening but you can't be a, a good little puppy with your head down in the long grass. That's bullshit. I am a meat-eating predator, so you better watch out, all you people that are screwing with our atmosphere and our businesses and everything else. It's just ridiculous. And this fake news, it's ridiculous. So that's my rant, and I do modeling to keep my sanity. With this puppet show that's going on. It's absolutely ridiculous. And my closing statement on this little rant will be, Rusty, they're trying to sell us that Korea has snuck up a satellite that can drop EMTs on us at any time. And if you don't believe me, Google it. And you know what I know about that. And that's all I'm saying. And... Sparky, God bless you, man, for great videos last year. And my favorite one is the one where he has superimposed the um, uh, the uh, Nobler, because that, I swear, is the best. There's mine. I just pulled the engine out again. I'm flying it with that, um, that 40 I got from Brodak, and what a beautiful motor that is, man. It is broken in now, and I'm getting such beautiful runs on it. Now, um, what I would like Sparky to do to generate more interest in this, he needs to do one of his fantastic um, noblers, but don't use a drop of dope on it. Use some balsa right or whatever and do some monocoat or some iron-on film covering and just see what the weight comes out because I will guarantee you he is going to build one of the lightest, highest-performing airplanes on the planet when he goes to iron-on covering. Now, I understand that can't compete in the current stunt rules because you got to have these automotive finishes. And I've got everyone at Wendy's videos. I've spoken to them. I've met them. You know, I appreciate all that art. But you aren't going to get new people going there with this stuff. They aren't going there. Especially young people is so close um, for those guys that they only win and lose by a couple of points and the appearing points are. Oh, are I know. Like, so it's, like if you're them. not an 18, you better stay home. Yeah. No, I, I know I go there. I mean, I love it. You know, I've been at the Nats many times, but I'm usually in a, I'm always in a team event in RC scale. And uh, that's usually where I hang out. But I do get over to the control line because it is a love of mine. But I love combat, too. But I only fly the real slow stuff, as you know. You know, with the old antique planes. You know, I like the uh, voodoos and the combat cats. And we don't allow anything over a coffin back 40. But now I've had to limit it to a... um, because there's nobody around with those anymore. And there's a couple guys around with uh, Fox 35 stunts. So I've got my voodoo with an old Fox 35 on it. With a muffler, and it flies beautiful. 70 foot, all day long. I can fly the whole stunt pattern. You know, I'm going to get a guy to video this, and and I'm not going to post it. I'm just going to send it to Charles. And I saw Charles had to jump off early. Too bad. I'll give it to you, Charles. I'm going to be 70. And I've never even tried this thing other than a couple weeks ago. I know there's a lot to do with the airplane because (laughs) I have zero fuselage. I have all flying elevator. 
and a very high lift wing. And it's very closely coupled. It flies at about 79.8 miles an hour on 70 foot lines. Okay, and we timed it today. And it was a little windy today. And um, everybody said, uh, you know, oh, we're, uh, we're, we're going to wait. I mean, shit, man, I, I don't get guys even willing to stooge for me. So Terry flew. And nothing to it. You know, I have adjustable hey, weight flying. boxes on them. Huh? If you wait until the wind's perfect, you ain't never oh, going to get the fun. Listen. How many you you guys go to contests? When is the wind perfect? Once in a while. No. Nah, it's we had to fly in some hellacious wind last Sure, Monday. I've seen it. Even on practice days, guys are flying in the rain. Yeah. You only know, have to if you're going to you know get see if your engine's going to operate in that climate with that air density and whatever, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah it's all part of it. Hey uh Jim, is your microphone muted on purpose? Okay. Yeah, my dog's in here and she's making a lot of noise. So oh, yeah, I love your microphone. dog, man. I'm a dog person. I love dogs. <laughs> uh, I am too. And I I was at Mineral Wells for a while as a guest of the United States Army as an advanced helicopter training uh, instructor. So how close is that to you? Because it sounds like I remember that on a map. Waco um, is about three hours from me. Okay, that's it, man. I'm west, west of yeah. Waco. Yeah. So you're familiar with mineral wells? Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Excellent. You bet. Yep. Yep. Dogs and servicemen keep off the grass. I've seen that in Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah. Sailors and dogs keep off the grass. I hear you, man. Back during Vietnam. You know, I, I did meet a very beautiful girl, and she was one of the loves of my life, and she worked at this, it was a Texas chain restaurant, it was called the Hickory Stick, but they had just fantastic barbecue and steaks. I mean, you would walk in, and they had the steaks not sitting on ice, but above the ice on these uh, little metal uh, wood grates, like, you know, you know what I mean, just a great place and then you walk up and the chef would you would talk to the gentleman who was um you know grilling your steak while you're sitting there with your you know tray and your platter and stuff you know kind of uh i don't know kind of maybe a smorgasbord type restaurant but just i don't know fantastic food do, do they still hmm. have those or or have you heard of it i i, I have not terry yeah. i i don't it it might have uh, gone out because, you know, I asked a guy who went through, um, you know, they still have their helicopter school there, but it's not as big as it once was. Um, I still think it's the primary training center, but it's not near as big. But um, I asked a guy, oh, is that restaurant there? He said, well, the restaurant's there, but he didn't think the name was the same. So okay. who knows? Anyway. <clears throat> Never really had a bad meal in Texas, ever. And maybe, you know, my wife yes. tells me because I'm a Taurus, I have an inept ability to pick good restaurants. But I don't know. Texas is, a, <laughs> in general, a good place to eat. I'd like to travel out to cattle country and get what has got to be a, a superior steak. Well, that's to, what you're just talking about, yep. Yeah. Because I know what we get here. You can get good steaks here, of course, because they ship them everywhere. But, um, you know, and in, in my times in traveling around, I've talked to people from from uh, uh, beef country. And, and uh, it sounds to me like they got the good stuff out there and they keep it for themselves. <laughs> I agree. Well, there's a lot of restaurants that. Uh, I don't know. A lot of fi uh, there, There's a lot of restaurant tours. I, I I had a venture, a very successful venture capital company, and I went out there and performed what they call dog and pony shows. It's it's really a a sad acronym for for what you do, but you per, per you present 
uh, business plans that you forwarded out and their group has looked at and they say, yeah, come out and give us your presentation. So you fly out there and you book a local restaurant and you invite this hedge fund management team in or several hedge fund teams. That's always exciting. I was known for that. Joining three hedge funds that used to always try to bite each other's heads off for customers. And Terry brought them together as one. What do you think that does for your bio power? <laughs> anyway, there's this place that has these sugar cured steaks. And if you ask the restaurants, there's several other, I'm sure, beef purveyors around Texas because it's such a big state such colorful people, but they all have their sugar cured steaks. And man, you get one of those. And I mean, you got to sear it. Like I like mine Philadelphia style where it's like crispy on the outside and almost cold in the center. But uh, <clears throat> best steaks I've ever had anywhere. And I've tried to duplicate it here and I can closely, but um, you almost need that Sears station like Ruth Chris has that Sears from top and bottom at the same time. Because mm -hmm. I got a new, my, my, my wife got me a grill for Christmas. It's got a Sears station. Phenomenal. But uh, <clears throat> it's not this, it's better, but it's not the same because you can't do both sides at once. And when you do that, that sugar caramelizes along with the meat and it just builds this, this like spicy crust. It's incredible. And when your steak comes out, they put a timer on it because they won't let you touch it for five minutes. I mean, you can't poke it. You can't touch your fork on it for five minutes because that steak continues to cook. And that's the secret of steak cooking is the rest. And most yeah. people can't do that. Even when I cook my cheap Walmart steaks, I, I, get, I put it on the plate and then get my potato butter and everything else put together to make sure it has some sitting time. Yeah. So I don't drain, I don't want to drain it by cutting it too early. And, and you really like, like if you have people that like medium to well steaks, put those on the bottom, but I generally never stack steaks, you know, like and the most I ever do is four or six. And that's when I'm entertaining people. Mm-hmm. Because usually if it's my wife and I, um, I'll do two steaks, but she only eats a little teeny piece. And then I use the rest of the steak during the week in salads and yeah, di different things. I mean, I can eat a 16-ounce steak, but I don't do it much anymore. Man, you're making my stomach rumble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fact, I, I got I a love steak in the freezer. I'm going to have to get it out. It, 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 it had been the longest period for me not flying because I didn't get a chance to um, fly much with the hurricanes and stuff this summer. And then I got so busy, I couldn't go. And when the weather was good, I was busy. And, but today made up for it, man. I uh, burned almost a gallon of fuel. In fact, um, I did bring some kids out, though, and I trained them on this plane. And I was going to tell Charles that, um, you know, I just added some tip weight and I um, de-propped it and ran it real rich. You're running 25 and 35 for your trainers? Well, I, I was training them on the, the um, here it is over here, because I'm still running on a good battery. Ugh. See my whacked up garage here. But uh, there, there she is. A voodoo with a Fox 35. All right. Freshly washed and hung over the myriad of sailplanes. Okay, which is my truest passion. Yeah. That's my that. hydroplane waiting, uh, waiting final paint. I've also built three others that went out just in resined wood because that seemed to be a moneymaker over the winter. And they will be, be hitting lakes in the Midwest this summer this guy's got them in painting but yeah i just love the feel of the uh i don't know it uh certainly that um combat design like the old you know 
that's a combat kitten and a junior Satan. That design, um, aerodynamically and weight wise, that's your most efficient control line airplane going. I mean, it, it really is. And, um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of those similar planes yeah. that came out of that era. Oh, sure. Yep. Anyway, if you know it, it, uh, I'm gonna, you know, crank the uh, like I didn't have the nobler ready to fly today, but um, and I wasn't gonna let any of the all these scouts and this explorer guys, these explorers, I guess that's like scouting, um, you know, get a handle on anything like my nobler, yeah, not that oh, I no, can kill the nobler. nobler then. Yeah, when you but I let them kind fly this, and um, like I say, 70-foot lines, all I did is I added some tip weight, and I put, um, basically, we had some wood props that had tips that were bad, so I made a little jig for my Dremel saw, where you drill a hole in the, in, in the table, you know, and you put a bolt yeah. in it with a wing nut, and then you cut, cut your tips e equal balance it up i i was training my kids on these things and even when we go to the rc field my son was such a little scavenger the youngest one would get the older one to lift him in the big 55 gallon drum and it, it's not that there was garbage in there it was all wrecked airplanes and they're in there pulling parts out <laughs> props and stuff and we cut a lot of that stuff down plus it's real easy to um you know make three blade props out of a broken wood prop. I mean, you know, there's, we're a lot of fixtures available and there's plans available where you, you know, just the blades are held in by, um, you know, socket, uh, head bolts with, uh, yeah. locking nuts. I'm sure. Yeah. They're, they're keyed together with plates on them. Some of them. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And once there's you get the jig set up, I mean, hanger about that. Yeah, I got mine. A friend of mine went, his his daughter had a bad relationship, so she joins the Army. And this girl, she's still a gorgeous woman. God bless you, Angela, wherever you are. She joins the Army, and she gets transferred to Anheim, Germany, and she's um, working in air traffic control with basically men, but she's just real sharp for it, and she can handle the stress, I guess. So she meets a German guy over there. So my buddy's got to go over with his wife because they're getting married. And <clears throat> he knows I fly models. He comes back and he brought me, I'll, I'll bring it on next time. He brought me this jig. And you um, put like, uh, you can put a two blade prop in it and it allows you to cut it so that you can section it to make three four and five rate blade props and then it comes with a series of hubs where you can put them all together you know and it's not available here and i was talking to someone today um who might be connected with dubro and he said you know there's no reason why we couldn't start making those here and think of the blade combinations you could come out with because many times, well, you know, when you get a blade strike, how many blades get broke? One. Yeah. That's it, usually. Anyway, cool stuff. But hopefully we can get these, you know, there's no motors available. This is just crazy. You know, yeah, and these kids have bought ones off of eBay. And... Um, some of these Fox 35s they're buying and they're paying $45 and $50. They're so wore out, they, they will not sustain a run. And um, uh, that's three of the fathers got together and I pointed them in the direction. I don't remember the gentleman's name. I think he's up in Indiana that do, redoes the uh, motors by replating the pistons and all that and the cylinders. I don't remember his name. Because I had it, and they just sent them off up there. But they'll probably pay $75, $80 to have those motors refitted by that man. But it's like getting a new motor. 
Plus, it's tuned now. It's tuned. But that's a lot of hoops to jump through to experience a 35 or larger control line play. And I think that's where the fun starts. I mean, I, I had a Vico 19, a, um, a Tomahawk, but it was my first really kind of big airplane. And um, it wasn't until I got that old McCoy Redhead, the 35 Redhead, that it feel like I have an airplane out there. And it's not that you have to have it pulling a ton. It's just the feel of the larger prop and yeah. the power, <clears throat> you know. It's so addictive. And it had been the longest I've gone. When I came back today, my wife said, you know, she said, I don't know what that does to you, she said, but it does. It's beneficial to your soul. And I truly believe it. Because you are really, see, people don't get it. We are really connected to that airplane, not by electronics. You no, are we're part of the by machine. steel cables. That have We're part zero of the machine. Flex. That's what I tell everybody. You are you are feeling the stick, the miniature stick in that airplane. You might not have lateral control, but you've got the elevator, one hundred percent, and you can feel it. You can feel when the planes, you know, I pull up and I'm just trying to see how much the, uh, you know, that Fox thirty five because I I had a coffin back forty on it that just flies that thing like a dream on 70 footers. But I'm telling you with that Fox 35, there were times at the top where it fell out, but I was like looping it up there where it's almost vertical and then it fell out. And with the Fox 40 coffin back, no way, man, it stays there. It stays there. If there's enough wind, Ask anybody who watches combat, if you watch slow combat, if there's a lot of wind gusts, you can get those planes almost to stand vertical. They're not going to stay there a real long time because the plane's got so much power. Mm -hmm. It flies through it. But it can stall it up there, and it hangs there. It doesn't come in on you. You know, and you don't want to be yanking on the handles. That was what was happening today. When the handle would get light, with some of these new guys on my plane, they'd start want to pull on the handle to feel the tug. It's going to get light because it's going to get light. Don't yank on the handle. Now you're pulling the plane in on yourself and you just put a big friggin' loop in the line or a big sag or a, you know, you still have control even though there's a loop, but its sensitivity is lost. It's just best to let it fly out. If it's starting to really crash, then you better start getting good backward running skills, as we all know. Only too well. You know, we got our friend Mike Lunke joined us. He's over on chat. No video tonight. But, oh, uh, darn it. Hey, Mike. He, he was in here the other night and had a, had a bunch of um, uh, half A Russian engines, uh, Norvells and such, that somebody had given him, and he was trying to get them running a lot of them had good compression, but, uh, he says he, he, he got, uh, seven of them working. And, wow. uh, he said some of them are really screamers, AMEs and VAs. Now I don't know VAs, but I know what AMEs are, but, uh, yeah. So he's, he's working with Sam and, uh, you know, his young son. And so, uh, uh, that'll give him plenty of stuff to fly while he's tuning up. Sam's coming along pretty quick. Well, he'll go to the Nats. There's no question. Oh, yeah. He's that's got right. A good tutelage. That's His father's like minded. And um, what a yeah. character building experience. That's all I can say. <clears throat> along with everything else, what a character building experience. Yeah. Yeah. Mike was <clears throat> talking about Sam's progression the other night. And, yeah. And, yep. and uh, you know, he's, he's got him on a pretty reasonable schedule and he's not pushing him just as fast as sam can learn it he's you know ratcheting him up just a little bit as they go along so yeah that's a delicate tight rope yeah that um that's that's the tight rope between the father and the son and it's a good tight rope but the the whole a uh a, a good client of mine that is the head of one of the largest psychiatric 
things in North America said to me, he says, that's a good analogy. He says, you want to keep that rope real tight. Okay. You want that rope loose. You got to keep the rope tight between your children and your wife. Everything. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. I think it's good advice. There was a message there. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's going to be twister time shortly because I'm going to get some video of mine. And um, we'll have a lot of guys flying twisters this summer. And I'm going to see if uh, I can get... Um, See, see, I need to cultivate another guy to go flying with control line. My what? My one other buddy, as you know, passed away right before Christmas, uh, and he had been knocked out for a while because he had uh, gotten a stroke out golfing. Do you know what's bizarre about this? Uh, he was out golfing, and he had a new set of carbon shaft clubs, and this guy was. How old was he when he died? He was 88 when he died. I mean, this man was in good shape and a phenomenal golfer, scratch golfer. So he had these expensive clubs with these carbon fiber shafts. And he and a couple guys were out practicing, hitting chip shots because he lived on the golf course over here. And they had a lightning strike that hit the ground between them. It knocked all three of them down. The next morning, when this gentleman woke up, his wife said he could make no sense. His left side of his face was things. He was drooling. He had like a stroke that night. Oh, mercy. And all those other guys have had problems now. Wow. And um, it, it was the electric shock of that lightning. No doubt, yeah. In Florida is the lightning that capital. Much, you know, I should have known this, but. You know, a guy told me, he said, oh, Florida's the lightning capital. I said, really? I didn't know that. really is. I looked it up. It's the lightning capital of North America. I don't know if it's just because there's more people playing golf down here or if they actually can count it. I don't know. Well, I don't know. If it's only golfers getting hit by lightning, maybe so. But, but the, uh, uh, the deal is the club he was hanging on to, the head melted. I mean, the head didn't melt, but the glue, the hot glue holding the the, the thing to the shaft melted off a lot of current flowed through that that's what i'm thinking straight through his body to the ground straight through his chest yep yeah everything that's correct but the head on the club he was holding was steaming and it was off of the uh the carbon fiber shaft and um i believe they were pings and i think they use epoxy to glue on so you know you gotta you know when you want to re- remove epoxy well you put the torch to it if you, you if heat it up yeah yeah anyway bizarre so i don't know i don't golf much so i'm not worried but uh today when it started rumbling a little bit i was going to finish my gallon of fuel i decided to quit because i heard some rumbling way off in the distance there were clouds i thought time to quit yeah, time, you got to respect the lightning. Yeah, there was nothing around, but I heard rumbling. Never even came close, but I thought, nah. I was having such a good day. You know, they always say, quit when you're winning. And everybody had got a chance to fly. And the one kid who broke two props, now he got to fly three times, but the third time he got it. And he ended up being the best one of all of them that flew because, well, I think you learn from your mistakes, but I told him, I said, you're not paying attention. I said, watch the other ones. And I brought, I had him come out to the circle with me and sit down because he wasn't getting it on the outside of the circle. So for him, it worked out, but, um, it's just a tremendous sport. I, I, refuse to let this thing die and i share your passion and i i wish sparky was on here because i really want to push him to do a listen tell him to build the thing make it a two-part wing i'll come up and get it i'll monocode it up there and then he can fly i'll monocode it if he doesn't want to try it and 
you can't screw it up. If it looks bad, you tear it off and put a new piece down. Mm-hmm. You know, the man's an artist. He can do that. I know he can. See, nobody knew was going to come in here when you got to do dope and tissue and stuff. These kids wouldn't mind it, but the parents aren't going to allow it. You know, they just aren't going to allow it. Yeah. So anyway, I'm a Monica hack myself. You know, I am I too. Just, I you know the wings. I, mean, I still love um, tissuing. And, you know, I mean, I love the yeah. artistry of it. I, I never draw do, panel lines and stuff on my monocode plane. I mean, I never monocode anything but the wings. But yeah. uh, but but still, um, that's the easiest way for me. Yep. Well, it builds a light, predictable weight wing. And monocoat, and um, I like, uh, I guess it's luster coat from uh, Horizon Hobbies. I've yeah, fallen I use into that for a clear. lot of their stuff. And um, I just finished uh, an airplane for a, a client, a um, alien aircraft Aeromaster. It's a takeoff and Lou Andrews Aeromaster. And they're flying them now on a 21cc Sato gas. And I covered the plane for them, and I used, um, they had a red uh, red and black checkerboard. I think it's a two, three-inch checkerboard, and then they have like a three-quarter inch or half-inch checkerboard. And instead of having to cut all those trim sheets like I do for my checkerboard, it's just not a, it, it's just the way it's printed. And that stuff was really fun to work with, but you had to be real careful on lining it up. Um, to make sure you line the checkerboards up with, you know, the trailing edge, get it real straight. But fun stuff. I've got some 2K clear here I was telling uh, Rusty about. Uh, it's Spray Max. Yeah. yeah. Two part. Clear That's what I'm going to use on the nose of the cardinal. Yep. This this I hate, I right hate up to here. Get it in smaller containers. This piece right up here comes off the cap, and then you got this piece right down here. You put yeah. it on, and then hit it in. Release the catalyst. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I heard a lot of guys. When did you pay it. for a can? Twenty-four dollars. Fifteen. Oh, $24. Yeah. See, yeah, that's the price I've seen lately too. When yeah. I'm looking for it, my buddy it picked up a can. Smaller cans. Yeah. He picked a up a can, can, can for 15 and it wasn't any good. It screwed the paint up. Yeah. That's the one that works, but you're kind of committed to uh, painting a few planes. Once you activate it, I don't know how long yeah. do they say it stays good in the can. I say if you keep it in the house, you might get it to last five or six days. Okay, oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, you gotta have your projects lined up if you don't want to have to yeah. throw it away. <clears throat> right, right. Well, I plan to use it. I, I'd use that um on ninety-nine percent of all my gas uh RC uh hydros. And that's, it's just that's great where stuff. I, that's where I learned about it. The guy said that he uses it on his hydros and it's good, it's good for the sixty percent nitro he runs in those. Oh, there's no question. Yeah, and we're only running gas in ours, but when I was running nitro, that's when I fell into it. Yeah. But you got to pay the price for it, but it's totally worth it. Yeah. The only other thing I have found is a good tip, and I know Rusty's aware of this because I've heard him mention it. I take a, I've got an old blue washcloth, and I heat it up in the microwave once it's fairly wet, wrap it around the spray can after I get it shaken up prior. And shake it up and get your temperature of your can about 90 degrees. And you can tell when it's starting to feel, when it feels as warm as your hands, and you know it's around 95, 96 degrees. Then when you spray your paint out, what you've done is you've thinned the viscosity a little bit, which when it sprays out of the nozzle, it breaks up into smaller droplets. And you've also increased the pressure of your air can slightly by heating it up a little bit now you can put them in a pan of hot water but a lot of the luster co- listen 
I have a friend. I'm not going to say his name because he wa- he's watching. Tom, you're watching. You don't sign on. I, we watch your videos. I've sent your videos to Rusty, and he's watched them. Now, you should man up and come on here. <laughs> now, in his wife's kitchen, he painted stars around the top because he had two luster coat cans blow up and hit his kitchen ceiling. Oh, crap. Two cans. That's a True little story. too hot. True story. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's a little too hot. Didn't know. Well, listen, it doesn't take a whole lot to get it to uh, to pop off. But I strap mine to the front of my space heater, and uh, when it gets uh, close to too hot to touch, I take it off. That's too hot. <laughs> it probably is, yeah. Yeah, I, I just used the washcloth thing. I had a, um, I was out at that um, SEMA show out in Las Vegas uh, that was right before my younger son departed us. And uh, he and I were out there. And uh, this guy was, they had damaged a car, moving it in or something. And I saw this guy and he says, well, he just run out to the, to the motorhome and heat these up in the microwave and they're running these cans wrapped in washcloths and we watched them and that's where i learned that i asked the guy and he explained it to me i've been doing it ever since with every rattle can including model master and testers just phenomenal works phenomenal now we got our uh, newest uh youtube watcher Ayman Mahmoud is his name, and uh, he's been he's been watching us from the YouTube side lately. Hi, Ayman. Thanks Welcome. for coming to visit Welcome. us. Hope I'm saying your name right, Mahmoud. I bet that's right, Mahmoud. But anyway, I mispronounce half the people's names. You do a great job, man. I'll try to get it right. We had a, a French guy with a French name on here one night, and I tried and tried, and he finally came back and said, that's about as close as you can get without being a native French speaker. <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> so a lot of people sick with the flu, man. I know Steve was whacked out for a while. Yeah, he was. Uh, he'd gotten his flu shot, so I think he spared himself another five days of misery. But boy, nothing will make you miserable like the flu. Yep, real, real bad. Well, I promised my wife I would uh, jump off at 11. I have a couple errands to do, and I will be back on um, Friday. Or if you guys want to jump over to the um, Forbidden Zone anytime. Carrying and the pirates, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. But all right, uh, man. Glad to see you active and everybody and um keep the twister going, man. You're gonna love it. Man. Good uh, airplane. I'm gonna do it. We're glad to have you back. <laughs> I I um would would anybody be interested in um some rib sets for one of the do you know the custom built like uh, big voodoo thing I built? It's not really a big voodoo. It, it's, I don't know. It's kind of a cross between a voodoo and a combat cat. Like mm-hmm. I ran my LA 46 on it. So when I tow the, uh, it's the <laughs> silver bird with the blue stripes with the blue LA 46. It has my other LA 46 in it. Yeah. The one I tow the videotape with. A friends are two guys here are asking me for rib sets and some guys up north. I may go to my friend and Stuart, but I'm not going to just get 10 kits cut. I'm going to get a hundred because the ribs are pretty much the same, except for some of the inner ribs where the um, uh, bell crank mount goes and things like that. It's basically a updated version of a voodoo. So I've got pretty much everything together, and I have my friend over at this furniture place. He just built this uh, huge house over on Jupiter Island, and I came out of there today with close to 300 pounds of 
maple motor mount stock. Holy shit. Well, I, I just got to run it. I'm wow. going to go over tomorrow afternoon to my buddy's shop where he has just the ultimate table saw. I have one, but he just has the Rockport table saw. of with, And he has a selection of blades like, you know, he his blade cabinet is locked up. You know what I mean? So I'm going there <laughs> to cut these things. And um, That's cool. I, I may throw these kits out for what their costs are and the cost to ship because I'm not looking to make any money on them. But I'd like to see a lot of, you know, and Shug has one of my planes. I think I sh- sent you the video on it, didn't I, or not? Rusty, did you see it or not? No? I think, yeah, I did yeah. see it. Yeah. You sent it in. Yeah, so he has the only other plane in existence right at the moment, but. It, it's a fantastic flying plane. I guess you could use it for slow combat other than the fact the motor's bigger than they like you to use. Well, but it loves that LA-46. It just I, I built it around the LA-46 when it first came out. Would it fly on a, a 35, Terry? Um, yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah, it will. It certainly will. And I Look, got a Super I, Tiger G twenty one thirty five. I bet will fly. Oh, oh, it'll pull it real nice. And what you can do if you after it's built and you think it's flying too slow, well, you know it. it its rib design is that the outside uh, bay has an extra rib. You're 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 familiar with that voodoo concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all you would have to do is. Yeah. I would suggest if you're going to use a 35, just cut a rib off each side and build it just with that little shorter wing. Keep everything the same. I built a lot of voodoos. <laughs> yeah. Listen, today, my last flyer was a young, he was a um, explorer. I, I guess that's similar to scouting, but it's different because they didn't. I was an explorer. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe it's um, a higher level. You know, that was back in the uh, yeah. That was back in the early seventies, but uh, we get to do yeah, cooler shit than the scouts other, do. And, anyway, to... yeah, the last guy to fly, we were out in the circle. There was a couple kids out there then, where they're all sitting low, and um, when the engine quit, he goes, "What?" He he went to hand me the controls. I said, "Just keep it level. If it starts to dip, just you know, he was." Overcorrecting, but then as he kept doing the corrections got less and less and then when he hit the wind side one of the kids jumped up and caught it because there's nothing you can slow these combat planes down to a walk into the wind you can drop them into the grass when when my That's son cool. goes flying with me as my stooge he catches the plane all the time all the time and it's not any great piloting skill of mine. It's just that it's an easy airplane to fly. And what a rewarding airplane to fly. It's a shame you can't use them for stunt. Because you, in stunt, you got to drag around all that fuselage. That's why I'm such a fan of uh, profile. I mean, you know, I love the full-bodied airplanes, how they look and everything. But when they're on the end of the, of the lines... Who cares if it's a profile or you got a whole fuselage? Or in the combat, who cares if you got a fuselage at all? I don't. I'm interested in how it flies. And that one plane that um, oh that you guys were talking about the other day with the foam wing and the that's an excellent trainer too. But that's so close to a Texas style combat plane, it's incredible. You know, it doesn't have the twin boom, but it's basically a yeah. Texas combat type plane. Mike Leinke just wrote to us. He said, Sam's in the scouts, and uh, we'll be doing a pack CL flying day in the spring. He said he'll be putting 22 scouts on the handle. Oh, excellent. Good on you, man. Cool. <clears throat> when Sam was little in, in, in uh, kindergarten, he made um, all the stuff up so that they could assemble whip planes and uh, then took them out in the schoolyard with the teacher and let them all just get the um, feel of, you know, whipping oh, yeah. them around and getting them to fly. Excellent. And uh, there's something to be learned from that. 
But I, Mike says he's making uh, RSTs for these rugged stunt trainers. Oh, yeah. I think that's a smart choice. That's a great airplane. Foam airplanes, repair them at the field. Five yeah, that was epoxy, a big part done. of our discussion the other night. We talked about foam versus versus yep. ribs. And uh, that for trainers, they're, they're just a whole lot easier to work yep. with. Yeah, foam and packing tape. Those are my friends. <clears throat> Oh, Ron Hess says he does it too. He, he they bring their scouts out <coughs> to the RC field and put them on buddy boxes. Yeah, ac absolutely. That's it. We got to perpetuate the the passion. I won't even call yeah. it a hobby. I know the I definition of a hobby, a and I have it way worse than a hobby. I've had it my whole life. I love it. I usually call it a sport. Listen, I was at an RC swap meet. I guess there was a bunch of them this past weekend all over the state. And uh, this friend called me over to his little pop-up, you know, uh, little covered thing. He had his little table. He says, come here. Come here. I'm gonna, we're, we're, we're playing a game. So you had this thing <clears throat> where you smell in this box and you had to guess what it was. No so the, thing, the three, listen, the three things he had was Aero Gloss Dope, number one amboids and um what was the other one testers enamel paint that's the only one i missed i said it was pactra but the amboid cement have you forgot what that smelled like i don't think i've smelled any for about 40 years it was amazing anyway. i used to build whole airplanes with amboid <laughs> me too, man. Yeah, me too. Minnesota Mike just dropped in. Hey, Mike. How are you, Mike? How are you feeling, Mike? Better, I hope. Mike's been a little under the weather lately, more than a little. We've had a lot of friends and uh, family yeah, of friends who have been under the weather lately. Been that kind of winter. Have you guys tried this stuff? No, I've seen it. I looked at it. Man, it I'm up. telling you. I just um, did one of those wood hydros. And the man that want, the manufacturer now is saying, use this glue instead of epoxy. And I, I said, look, it's your boat. I'll do whatever you want. Now, when I joined the skins to the, to the hull, that was all done with slow cure epoxy. But the whole framework of the boat was put together with this pipe tight bond too. And it gave you ample working time to slide the pieces around and lock them in place. And it's real. All the stuff today fits so well. It's all laser cut. But this stuff is phenomenal and it's waterproof. So, um, you know, a lot of the well, um, stunt guys, they only build with uh, aliphatic glues. In fact, if Charles yeah, was here, yeah, he would that, tell you. That can't be aliphatic if it's waterproof. It is, though. It can. Yeah, it is. It just has a um, uh, catalytic, catalytic polymer that comes to the surface, sealing the joint. Oh, okay. That's it. Yeah. And it takes paint because I did some test panels. Takes paint. You don't even have to scuff it. A lot of the other white glues, you usually have to scuff them mm -hmm. for the paint to take. Otherwise, you get fish eyes for some reason. Right. So, uh, so I, somebody said it's milk fats, which it could That's be. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's what they, you know, they developed that when they were building the mosquito. Mosquito bomber, correct. And yeah. it was a byproduct out of the cheese industry in Scotland. Elmer's glue. Yeah. Yep. Elmer's glue. That's correct. And that is an English cow. El Elmer is an English cow. If you uh but they oh I didn't know that. But yeah, they had did have trouble with bovine water melting in Wisconsin. They did have trouble with <clears throat> water melting them. Correct. And, uh, but it was light as hell, so that's part of why that plane was so fast. Well, they're working on a method now. There was a mosquito at um uh, in fact, the video went out today. I think I dropped it to you because you're in my aviation mailbox. 
about that silver mosquito that was at Oshkosh in 15. Flying one. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't remember. Anyway. I, anyway. Um, yeah, they... Uh, <clears throat> fortunately, they're not having a whole lot of problems with the wood delaminating, but they covered them with um, balloon cloth, which is a cotton Muslim material. It was actually doped on on the outer plywood skin. And that's what uh, <clears throat> is some of the problems. Like Kermit has Kermit Weeks of Fantasy of Flight, which is a phenomenal effort and collection of airplanes, has his up in Oshkosh. And I believe that was one of its issues when he flew it up there. He was getting the skin delaminating or the something like that or on the control surfaces or something. But uh, what a beautiful airplane. <clears throat> I uh, saw a video. Um, you know, they have that beautiful plastic model, Tamiya, 132nd scale um, of the Mosquito. There's a German company now called uh, Model Masters, I believe, or whatever. No, uh, magicmodels.com. And he builds these really cool micro led light and motor kits for all these models and it's got a little processor with it so when you kick it on like the cockpit lights come on the instrument panel lights up the interior light comes on the landing lights come on then it starts the left motor first and then the right motor then it goes to red cockpit lights like it's in the air i mean it's just amazing hmm. All right, guys, 11 o'clock. I got to bid you adieu. Okay, got, dude. Well, thanks for uh, yep. joining us. And uh, we'll so, so see are you back sticking Friday. any hogs with that crossbow? <clears throat> huh? Are you sticking any hogs with that crossbow? No, but our deer season ended yesterday. <laughs> and I, got a, I got me another doe yesterday morning. Oh, did you? Excellent. Yeah, so Excellent. Uh, now, we'll, now we'll start the. Uh, the hog hunting. Yeah. In earnest. Yeah, we're we're on a big time here. <clears throat> big time. So and, I don't know what's what's quieter to um to bang them with a 300 blackout suppressed where there's just a little thud and maybe a little squeal or to stick them with a silent quack crossbow and hear them going all over the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> is there a bounty on those things no but we have a cuban butcher just up the road in hobe sound nice man carlos and we bring them there we field dress them and we take care of that and salt and everything and make sure you wear gloves two pairs i wear we bring them up there and he butchers them for us and we take back straps and sometimes a ham or two but we usually bring them so many we we only take a small fraction we leave the rest for him and i know he donates a lot to the food bank but he also sells a lot to the uh cuban community for all i know is we get our back strap it's butchered and nice paper and freezer wrapped and ready to go yeah all right god bless you guys truth bears all investigation right, i'll see you see friday you Thank you, Terry. yep All right. Just me and you. Me and you, Rusty. I might knock off early tonight. We're not getting we're not getting much business. Um, I never have advertised it in the open forum on Stunt Hanger. Um, you know, I was wanted to make a hundred percent sure that we were under control here without the uh trolls coming in. And I think we can pretty much confirm that now we hadn't had that problem and um so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do it maybe we can get some people that don't even know about our hangouts and uh get more people in here that'd be cool uh, yeah it's charles had to go but uh even some of our old regulars i'm surprised they hadn't been back lately but uh i don't know it's 11 12 i usually go until midnight 
I don't have anything great to add. Once I get building, yeah, Ron Hess is going to pull a plug too. Good night, Ron. Appreciate you dropping in. Good night. Um, but once I get back into building and get my mind back in it, then I'll be able to have more off the cuff stuff to talk about. Um, at least, well, Terry came in and pretty much dominated the conversation tonight. So, uh, at least, at least, uh, at least we didn't have to think of something to talk about every minute of it. <laughs> Once he gets going, it's hard to get a word in edgewise. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. His avatar is still up. He's probably listening to us talk about him. Okay. Minnesota Mike, we'll see you later too. He's, he's resting up. He's home from the hospital now. Well, so good. yeah, you get, you get plenty of rest. And, and gradually build yourself back up and uh, look forward to have you, having you back strong and strong and tough again. So uh, take it easy, man. Well, let's just call it a night. I guess, I guess uh, uh, we'll do a short show tonight and uh, be back Monday. Uh, I mean, I'll be back Friday and. Uh, I probably won't be here Friday night. I've got, Friday nights are hard for me. I mean, if I'm here, though, I'll, I'll log on. Yeah. Monday nights are a lot better for me. Okay. All but right, I, man. I enjoyed well, it. Uh, yeah, I did too. And we had a pretty good YouTube crowd, so I appreciate all you guys coming in. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad you came in, Mike Leinke. Everybody else has signed off, I think. Uh, but uh, we appreciate y'all coming. And so... Uh, between now and Friday, uh, if anybody wants to hit that uh, dollar sign under the chat box and give us a little ching, that is, it really is helpful. I, we appreciate it when you do that. It can be as little as you want. Um, but uh, until then, we'll call it fair winds, tight lines, and, um, and um, see you, as Sparky would say. Oh, and Eddie Suter. Good night, Eddie. Thanks for coming. Good night, everybody. All right. Signing off.